pretty remote location. This is the first in my new video series. Over the last two years, I've been photographing village, very small village, mosques here in Turkey, across the entire country. With tiny fragments of research to go on, I've been scouring the country looking for what remains. And the series documents that exact process. Sometimes I will probably get, you know, nasty surprises on my journey. I may also get disappointment in terms of, I don't exactly know what I'm turning up to. You're going to be seeing the final result at this point, of course. But for me now, I've got it all to look forward to. The next five or six videos, depending on how many locations we visit, I'm going to showcase to you the challenges we face in each of the locations that we decide to film in. So most people, when they're starting out their architecture and interior journey, would look what equipment they need and they would probably opt for a wide angle lens. And I'm doing exactly that today for the first shot with you anyway, on location. I'm going to opt for my 15 to 35 F2.8. Now you don't need 2.8 for an architecture shoot. In fact, most shots we do on this channel are going to be between f7.1 and f9. And today, that's going to be no different. But you will usually opt to get one of these first in your toolkit, a nice wide-angle lens. And that is what we're going to be looking at today. The number one mistake people make with wide-angle lenses in interior photography. Okay, so so in architecture terms, you know, if you're, you're capturing architecture photography, you're looking for the main features of the place, and you're probably thinking, well, what is that in a mosque? And nine times out of ten, I think we're going to be facing many of these, which is you're looking at it and it's like a staircase, and you've seen that in the B-roll. Now you're probably thinking, what are they? Or you might know. That's a fair point, but you might not. That's called a minbar. That's basically where the sermon would come up, go up to the top and do his prayers down to the people down here. And we're going to face probably quite a lot of those on our journey. As I said, I'm selecting my wide angle lens, my 15 to 35. Now for architecture photography, that's a pretty go-to focal length and decent starting point when you're coming into this genre. It allows you to capture, of course, more of the space, more of the room, especially on the wide end, and really focus on that kind of one-point perspective. The one-point perspective is the, the one you'd normally get of the whole room, the whole space, where there's one point the eye is drawn to. So, for example, in here, by the door, looking at the whole room. And, of course, 15 mil is going to mean you're going to capture all of that shot. So, for that reason, this is a very popular and typical focal length for shooting interior and architecture spaces. And with good reason, of course. And that's what we're gonna be using today for this first shot. I don't know how much daylight I've got left, but not a lot, I would guess. Winter time, I think sunset's about half past six. I don't know what it is currently. What is it currently? Half past four, so we're okay. <clears throat> Quick tip I'll give you as well when you've got the wide angle lens on. Always make sure your image stabilizer is off when you're on a tripod. It goes without saying probably, but some people overlook it. In fact, I see that quite a lot when I'm, people are joining me on location, you know, on workshops and stuff. Now I've framed up here 15 to 35 at 15 mil. And the subject is cool. It's definitely the right shot selection in terms of where I'm pointing the camera. My positioning is fairly decent. It's easy to go too wide, really. Let me explain what I mean. I'm on a six foot tripod. You know, it's kind of my height with the center column up and I'm six foot exactly. It's definitely eye height, it's maybe not my head height. So just under six foot. Now, the biggest single mistake people make with a 15 to 35 or an equivalent wide angle lens is to go too wide is to use the lens at 15 mil in my case. And the reason for that is because just because we've got it, it doesn't mean it's the most interesting of compositions. 
you should always go through your focal length and other frames through the focal length in the 15 to 35, for example. At 15 mil here, because of the height of my tripod being six foot and I'm limited to that height, I get more walls in, more width with that lens and I get more height, I get more of the ceiling in. But with it, because I'm at this height, I also get an awful lot of flooring. And even if the tripod was higher or lower, in fact, lower, I'd get more flooring and most people don't have a six foot tripod. So you would get more flooring in. I don't think that lends itself very well to a, a pleasing composition, the correct composition in this space. So of course, if there's too much foreground, what that's then doing is not giving us necessarily the most pleasing composition or architecture photo. So what's happening here is we're overemphasizing our foreground elements and they're making other parts of our composition smaller. So in other words, they're kind of making our architectural details, and in this case, it's the stairs, the minbar, smaller in our frame. So what we want to do is we want to check through our focal length here to try to fix that a little bit in our composition. And that's easily done, right? It's an easy trick and something we can very quickly rectify. It might mean that we're better off moving further back or further forwards using a different focal length to almost frame up in a different way. Still maintain some of that ceiling, but just less of that overemphasized foreground. And that's what I'm going to look to do here. Because right now, at 15 mil, I'm going to take this shot and I'll show you it. And I think you agree we can do a much better job. Okay, so you just see me move back there, short distance. When I'm standing in that position, at eye height, so the tripod is basically, we've established my height, right? The scene looks perfect. That's kind of what I want to photograph. So what I've done is I've pulled my tripod back and then moved through my focal length to get something that's more pleasing to the eye. I've gone past 15 mil, of course, past 17, past 20, past 24, and I'm currently sitting at 28 mil. And I really like now the overall look and feel of the image. So my top tip here would be to always go through your focal length when using a wide angle lens and look through your framing and check the different focal lengths and see the impact that it's gonna have on your final result. You might not always want or need necessarily that 15 mil wide angle shot. And it's the same here for me. So I'm gonna grab the shot. And I'm gonna put both results on the screen. I think you'll agree that this second one is much, much better. image is quite stretched particularly on the edges and that's what we want to avoid but more importantly of course there is loads of foreground it's a little bit distracting there's too much of it it's kind of over complicated the scene in the second one standing further back but punching that lens further in we've enabled us to kind of maintain the straight lines and edges of the architecture but also get way less of that dead space 
Still pretty similar framing in terms of where things are laid in the frame, but a very different look to the final result. All of these things would be emphasized even more if we were using something like an 11 to 24, 12 to 24. A 15 mil though does make a huge impact on those edges like you've just seen. The go-to architecture lens for commercial photographers is actually the 24 mil tilt shift, which I've just placed on my camera here. And I'm gonna have a little go at before we depart today. However, the reason why that's one of the most popular and probably the most popular lens for interior photographers shooting commercially is because it's got less distortion on those edges. When we're shooting with a wide angle lens, that distortion becomes pretty evident. And that's what we're trying to avoid. But even more so, that foreground interest but gets more and more prominent the wider we go. So in architecture photography, we're always making sure we're trying to get the best result in camera. There is ways to do this and fix things in post-production. That goes without saying. First of all, we could crop the image to get rid of some of that dead space down here. We could actually pull the viewer's eye a bit further up and keep things focused further up. Of course we could. Problem with that is we're going to be losing resolution in post. It's okay for me in the Canon R5, but it might not be okay for you in your camera. And you could also fix distortion in post too, to an extent. If you've completely got it wrong in camera, you've come, say, way too near the subject, you've gone way too wide, or you've got way too much flooring and the elements are all imbalanced, then it's not gonna be a very good starting point. And even if you do basic lens corrections and then do some very nice kind of distortion control in, say, Photoshop, it's still not gonna look great overall. You're gonna to have to get incredibly creative if you're gonna fix that particular shot in post. So it's always best to get it right in camera and then fine tune in post, not fix. So this video was just a teaser really of what's to come. I don't even think the images will make the cut in the final series. We head in the following videos to the Black Sea region of Turkey in the north as we seek out beautiful structures for this new series. A series that will be launched by the time I next upload to this channel. So if you've got any comments, leave them below. And until next time, see you all very, very soon.